Hello and welcome back. So now that we have all of our files in our project, the last thing to do is for us to upload this to PyPI so folks can just install it from PyPI. They can just run pip install taskquant, uh, which is the name of our project, and they should be able to get it right on the system. So this is taskquant right now. In order to make this a Python package, we need to do a little bit more of a, a bit of a homekeeping. So kind of the first thing I need to do is to make sure that there is the readme file and have this readme completed because it would then uh, reflect in, on the PyPI repository itself. So anyone who is interested about the project, they could go in there and read about what the project is about. Typically, you want to have like a quick usage, a quick installation guide and a quick usage to tell people how to use that. And then we're going to just do a quick round of testing. We're going to add a quick license file as well. So in the license file, this is just going to be an MIT license. It's just going to say permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of this software and associated, uh, associated documentation files. And they're allowed to do anything they want with it. So this is kind of, uh, it says here, this is kind of the, the meat of the, the license. It says the software is provided access without warranty of any kind, expressed or implied, including but not limited to the warranties of this, wedding, any action and stuff. So it's kind of saying that this software is there provided to you as is, all right? And then the permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of this software. That's, that's all the license is saying. So I'm gonna close this out. And finally, the last thing we need to do is to have a setup.py. So I'm going to open that up real quick and I'm going to show you, um, probably going to walk you through line by line what it's actually doing. But how you want to think about this is that a, the smallest Python project, a, a Python package that you want to put up on GitHub, or you want to put it out on PyPI or on any repository that you choose, the smallest one, it should include at the minimal a file containing your package itself, so that's task one. So this is the file, task one. This directory contains all of the code that we've written over the last two or three episodes of the series. It has the score subdirectory, it has the util subdirectory, and it has all of the functionalities. This is kind of the core of what our package is about. There's the colors, there's a create table, there's a helpful.py that shows, uh, that has a helpful function of deal path, whether or not the, a string is a directory. And the second file that we need, that we absolutely need, so there's only two things for a minimum Python package, the most minimal ones, well, the task one, setup.py. Setup.py looks like that. So setup.py contains all of the metadata about our project. So it tells anyone who's using our code or it tells the software who's trying to build this into a distribution package, what to do with it, right? What is the name of this tool that we're writing? So here, let me run it uh, line by line. So first thing we have the setup, and we say name equals to task quant. Version, we say underscore, underscore, version, underscore, underscore. So done the version, done the. What, what does that mean? Oh, it says from task one import version. So let's open that up. So let's go into task one. It, reading it, there is an init.py. It has nothing, but I added just this line of code, which says version equals to 0 0.02. And every time you write some new features in it, you introduce new functionalities to your package, you want to increment that. So if it's a major function, uh, function if it's a major release, you want to increment it on here. So the format goes like this. It goes like major, minor, and it goes like patch. Some people call this micro. So all the major features, if you're, if something that you release is going to break all the other older versions, so let's say you introduce some breaking changes to your package, that's going to be a major release, which means you're going to increment the major release from one to two, okay? So you're saying that, hey, this is no longer backward compatible with whatever previous version that, that you, you're actually using. And you want the person to actually take precaution, maybe not upgrade first, if there's still a lot of projects dependent on the older version of your tool. And then there's the minor one. This is kind of a way of saying that I'm not gonna break any, I'm not gonna introduce any breaking changes to the project. So you're free to use it, you're free to increment that. And then this is just kind of small patches. Maybe you, you found that there is a, a un, unused um, variable and you wanna remove that, changes of that sort. So this is kind of uh, how you set up the version. This is the convention. I'm just gonna remove that. And here it says from task one import version. So this is also where you can specify version. But I, I want to keep things consistent because I don't want to have to update two places every time I do something. So I if I, I mean, so I may forget about that. If I have to do is, and the next time I introduce some new features, some new functionalities, I may forget about updating the one in setup of the PY, but I'll update the, the one in version in, in init.py. So to avoid that kind of mistakes, I decided that I'm just going to import version. Every time I update this, it will also update the one in here because it's just going to be importing from there. And then we have the description. 
and description is just kind of what it will show on PyPI. So anyone who's trying to take interest in your project, who's trying to understand what is this project really doing? What is this tool really about, right? So this is what it's saying, a Python CLI that extends Task Warrior for productivity scoreboard and I think gamification. And then there's a long description. Now long description, I'm doing something a little bit more clever. I'm saying that uh, I don't want to type the full thing out there. So what I'm doing is I'm going to say from path leap, import path. This is kind of a helper function on its own. And th does this actually introduce dependencies? It doesn't because the end user doesn't have to install path leap. Okay, so the end user doesn't need to know about any of this stuff. You're only telling this to your collaborators, anyone who needs to build this into a distribution package, you're telling them, okay? So this is from path leap, import path. And then I'm saying that this file, go go to the parent of this file. So the parent of this file, find the readme. So readme, so this should belong in the same directory. So this whole thing should point to your, essentially this is the same as os.getcwd. So you'll get your current working directory and then readme.md. And then from here, call the read text, right? Read text is just also provided to you called read text. And read text is just gonna take whatever you have in readme and just take that as a long description. Then I would say that long description content type is text markdown because that's MD, I'm, I'm writing that in markdown. You can also write that in other formats. And then there's the URL. So this will also appear on PyPI. So anyone who's taking an interest in your project, they're gonna go into PyPI and they can find more information. It would, it would, it would appear as a link and folks can click on the link and go to find more information about your project. Then you can set up your author, you can set up your author email, you can put a license again, you can just reinstate that, okay, this is the license, MIT. Packages. Packages is typically a list of where do you want to find a package. Now, if you only have a package and there's no more sub package, no more sub modules in it, that's really simple, just the name of your package. But in here, because each one of them score, this is also a package. Now, utils, that is also a package. So do I really want to go and put in all of them manually? I can, but I choose to instead just use find packages. Now, find package is something that I import from setup tools as well. This is also provided to you by Python. So you can just do setup tools and it would just give you the find packages function, it will just return a list of all the packet Python packages found within the directory. So this directory itself, it contain, let's say there's the utils, there's the helpful, there's the miscellaneous, there's the um, uh, core, whatever it is, all of the sub packages, all of the, uh, all of the packages found within this main directory, the, it's, it's what's gonna be returned here. And I said, do that excluding all the tests. So we're gonna be writing tests, right? So we're gonna just exclude all the tests. We don't want the tests in there. Okay, and then do you want to include any package data? So we say true here. What is the what is the dependencies? What are the dependencies for this package? And in here it's just TaskLib, which is the library that was written by the guys that wrote uh, Task Warrior. And so they actually have the they gave us the interface to Task Warrior itself, and we built on top of that, right? So TaskLib is the only dependency. Extra requires. So these are extra optional dependencies. It's it's optional. So even without including this, if the end user do not have tablet in their environment, it shouldn't break the tool. So these are just extra, these are optional, these are nice to have. So you're gonna put that. Then there are a few identifiers here, and then we have the entry point. Now entry points is kind of interesting here, why? Because it allows us to send setup and say, okay, console scrape, add TQ to that. So what this is doing is to provide the, an interface to the end user, so when they install your tool, they can just call TQ, just like that, and it should print out the, the it should run the main function, from the main module. So let me clear my screen and show you what I mean by that. So if I say TQ now, if I install pip install task one, after the installation, it says, okay, it's done. And it's done, why? Because it's really lightweight. It's less than seven KB as it, as, as it stands. So it's really, really lightweight, okay? Um, the whole, num, just NumPy and Pandas alone is 250 megabytes. And this is less than, this is what? This is less than 10 kilobytes. This is less than 10 KB. Right, so this is a really, really lightweight tool. It should install within one second. And so what we're gonna do is that, I'm just gonna clear the screen now, and I just have to say TQ, and it will just execute the main main. Now let's take a look at the main main. If you go into task one, there is the main.py, so this is what it's doing. So click onto that, and it says, okay, this is all the stuff that we've written in the past. Uh, I, I probably name it app.py at some point, but then I changed it to main dot main, dunder main dunder. And then within it, um, everything else is the same. You don't have to change anything in here. All of this is the same. But I'm saying that within this, call the main function. So this is the main function. So if you call this the app function, like we've done in the last video, then you wanna name this app. So you can name it anything you want, but I name it main, so I'm just gonna say hit the main function within the Dunder main file. So that's what I'm doing. So go to task one, which is here, 
then find the dunder main py which is this and then run the main function so if you have multiple functions in there and you name this app.py uh define app you name this app that you name the function app you want to have that as app i name it main so i'm just going to keep it as main finally it's what is the version of python required to use your package so all in all, the setup of the PY really is the way we try to describe all the metadata about our project, try to describe, give a description of what to do with it, um, telling the compiler what to do with it, telling the end user what to do with it, and also a few more fields you can use to describe it so that it will appear nicely on, Py, uh, on PyPI. All of this even, you can even simplify them because all you really need is, let me just remove all of this, what you really need What you really need, let's just remove all of this, is this. You really only need the name, the version, and the packages. You don't even need the description. But what you really need at a minimum is a name, a version, the name of your package, version, and the packages. And that's all you need. You plus them all into the setup function. And the name field though, this needs to be unique. So if you want to publish this package on uh, PyPI and you're following this tutorial and you name it task one as well. Now this is not going to work because it's not going to be unique enough. So how do you know if something is already taken or if this is a unique name? So you do so by going to PyPI.org. So this is where you find install publish Python packages within the Python package index. So if you want to publish your own package or you want to follow along this tutorial, you want to make sure that you change the name because the name has to be unique. So if you enter something very generic, like for example, date time, and you try and search for something, you should see a lot of packages here with date time, date time two, date time three, Sentinel, date time, date time globe. There is gonna be a ton of projects with that name. And if I, let me just log in. So let me just log into PyPI real quick and let me just take a look. So this is task one, so I already have that name. And if I click on view, then I'll see all the metadata that I just entered from setup.py. So I've seen the description here, a Python CLI that extends Task Warrior for productivity scoreboard and gamification. This is what I put in in the setup.py earlier. And this is the read, this is the readme. And this is the long description. So there's a long description and you say the long description, the format is marked down and this is where it's going to appear. And then there's the project links that this is going to link from the setup.py as well. So if you go back to setup.py and you look at the URL and you'll see this is the URL that we specify. So that is what's going to appear up here. All right. So there's the home page and at the very end of it, you see the author, you see the requires and you see the license. And then there's the classifier and that's also what it gets from your setup.py. So everything that you specify in setup.py, they're going to just going to appear uh, in here. So once you have setup.py set up, what's next? Now packages on PyPI are not distributed as this plain source code. You're not going to see all these Python code in there. Instead, what happens is that you're going to have to build them into distribution packages, wrap them into distribution packages. And the most common formats for distribution packages are source archive and Python views. How does it look like? Well, there is the build. Outside of that, there's also distribution. So if you see the .whl, that's views, w-h-e-e-l's. And between the source archive and Python views, Python views are typically smaller in size than source distribution. They can, they can, they, it is faster to, to install and to download and to just transmit that across a network. And also installing from views directly, it just avoids the intermediate step of trying to build package off using the source distribution. So you can have the source distribution and, they be, and folks have to either click in it, click on the zip file, download that and then build it from scratch using a make file or using a file that you write or you can just distribute the wheels file. So wheel file kind of act like a zip file, like a zip archive with this special file name, WHL, that kind of tells installers what Python versions to use and what kind of platforms to support. And wheel is just a type of build distribution, uh, put simply. In this case, build means that the wheel comes in a ready to install format and you don't have to do the build stage. The end user doesn't have to do the build stage as, is, as with the case of source distributions. So how do we create the source archive and the view? Well, we can just go back to our terminal and we say Python setup.py and we can just say create the source distribution, source as distribution, D-I-S-D. So source distribution and create the view as well. So there is the source distribution and then there's the view. So this will create two new files in a, in this, uh, this directory. So if, when you run this code, it's going to create two new files and create this under a directory called dist, which stands for distribution, okay? So when you run this, it will just create distribution folder, uh, the directory's distribution, and it's gonna put these two files in there. And the name of the file is gonna look like your name of the package, dash, and then your Python version, and then 
following by pytree.whl. And if you want to, you can click into any of them, maybe just unzip the file and just try and take a look at it and, and see whether they confirm to what you expect. On Linux, you can do something like TRL and you can say TDF and then you can just put in, let's print out the files, DIST, and then we say task one, 0.0, .0 let's say two, and then we say TRG, TRL, GZ. And this is gonna show you all the files in there. This is kind of listing all the contents from the task source. So this is the task source. It says list all the contents uh, within it. And so you see 0 0.02, you wanna see that you have the readme in there. You wanna see that you have this task one and all the main feed functions should be found in there. So this is kind of how you confirm that find packages is doing what you need to do, right? So if I if found all the packages, excluding task fo folders. So even though we have a task folder, it's not gonna do anything to it because it's excluded from here. And it will then find the other files and it will just list them in here. So just take a quick glance, make sure that everything is there, nice. And then you can distribute that now. So now that you have the source file, what's left to do, what's left to do now is to just distribute that. And to deliver this to PyPI, all you need to do is to say python.m and you can use a, for example, I can use I, I can use Twine. You can also use some other tools there. I'll probably leave a link at the description showing you all the different ways of doing that. But I like to use Twine, I'm used to it, I'm familiar with that. And I say Twine upload. And from here, I will just, Usually this is good enough. But for me, because I see that I have already uploaded both of these files, I wanna just put a dash dash, skip existing. And then I'll put a distribution and I'll say a wildcard. So it's what this is gonna do, it's gonna say that, hey, upload what you see in here, upload that to PyPI. And if I press enter now, it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna upload distribution to PyPI. And then it asks me for my username and I can put in my username like this. And then it's gonna ask me for my password. I can put my password in there. And then all of this will then be done. I'm not gonna do that because I've already done all of this. It's already on PyPI. So I'm just gonna pretend that I've done that already and I'm gonna clear my screen. And let me just make sure that I pip uninstall it. If I do pip uninstall task one, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna proceed to uninstall? I'm gonna say yes. So now it's uninstalled. If I try to run TQ now, nothing, it wouldn't work. There is just nothing in there now because I've uninstalled my package. So how do I reinstall this? I'm just gonna say pip install task one, run that again, and it's successfully installed task one. So this is now working. And if I run TQ again, now it's working again. So that's kind of how you do it. All of the process that I take to sort of put them into a package step by step from start to the end. And this is how you end up with a package that is incredibly lightweight, less than 10 KB, and installs in under a second. So I hope you enjoyed this series. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, uh, let me know in the comments, subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.